What's up, Smashers? Do you see the potential of pairing in Smash Ultimate? Or are you skeptical on its consistency at high level? Let me know how you feel in the comments below. I'll be honest with you, I was a huge non-believer in consistent parrying in competitive Smash Ultimate. But I'm here to tell you now, I've seen the light. Normally, I tell newer players to focus on more general skills before concerning themselves with the more precise mechanics, but parrying is proving to be much more impactful than I ever could have anticipated. I recommend you integrate this into your training regimen no matter your current level and as soon as possible. A piece of wisdom that I follow that I failed to share in my book is that in life, regularity is key. Even if it's just 15 minutes a day or an hour a week, you get a lot done when you do it regularly. So in this video, I won't just explain how to parry, but I'll be going over its impact in the metagame, how to practice it, and the most practical situations you could begin to apply it on a consistent basis. But first, let me tell you how I became a believer. If there's anyone to skip right to the flashiest way of playing, it's my good friend Tan Taco. He practiced pairing in all kinds of ways, but once he heard of one very effective method, the grind really began. The next time I played him, the results were shocking. Oh, we just saw a parry executed beautifully. No, he wasn't perfect shielding everything. In fact, most hits were not parried. But his consistency at parrying attacks that could be reasonably telegraphed was frightening. It totally invalidated options that would normally be very safe versus other opponents. I literally had to fight him differently than I would anyone else. Because he's the one who showed me the light, I'm going to let the man himself talk about how to perfect shield, or parry, and how he practiced it. Hey, Tan Taco here, and this is how I practice parrying in Smash Ultimate. First, you want to head into training mode. Select any slim character. Don't pick a big character, because you'll probably be shield poked. And don't pick a small character, because their shields are smaller. Then for the CPU, you want to choose Falco. Jump into the training level, and spawn two CPUs. Space them out on both sides of you, and set the CPU behavior to neutral special. Now you're set to practice parrying. If you don't know, your character will parry a move 5 frames after letting go of shield. This means that you want to time it so you let go of the shield button immediately before getting hit. Change the timing by attacking one of the Falcos or walk back and forth between them. Awesome. Thanks, Taco. If you haven't seen it already, I highly recommend Izzah Smash's video on parrying. So you know, letting go of shield normally takes 11 frames. This means if you wanted to do a grounded move out of shield, it would take 11 frames before you could even start the move. But when you perfect shield, you and your opponent freeze, with your opponent freezing 3 frames longer than you. So this is a 3 frame advantage as opposed to an 11 frame disadvantage to initiate a grounded move. This is huge, especially for combo starting grounded moves or for punishing with a strong kill move. It also lets you punish moves that are typically very safe. Like I said, it felt like it made currently viable options obsolete. We've found four highly practical situations you could start applying the new parry mechanic as soon as possible. If you've seen my How to Practice Smash Bros series, you'll know that understanding when to implement a technique is a critical step to fully mastering it. These will be the four situations to start with. The first is after normal getup from the ledge. Oftentimes, Players throw out hitboxes to apply pressure when your opponent is choosing their ledge option. If you're confident, you could normal get up timely enough to evade an initial hit, 
And a following attack on your shield can be telegraphed for consistent perfect shields and hard punishes. What you see Zero do in this clip may no longer be viable. The second is when you're above on a platform. In Smash Bros, it's typically a bad spot to be above your opponent. If you're above on a platform, you'll often be forced to sit in shield waiting for an opening to jump away and reset the situation. Because you're anticipating a hit on your shield at this time, it's a very practical opportunity to parry. Normally, opponents will space underneath you so that you cannot punish them. But with parrying, sharking from below a platform becomes rather punishable. Especially if you have an aerial that could start combos on landing that you could do as you fall through the platform after a parry. The third is against projectiles. If you're like me, you probably felt parrying projectiles to be useless. People are even begging for parrying to reflect them. I felt this way until, well, Taco got me. Projectiles are used to apply pressure, but if you're able to block projectiles without losing any shield damage, it reduces their in-game pressure significantly. When it comes to fast rushdown characters who use projectiles to force their opponents in shield, like Pichu or Inkling, parrying the projectile can be a highly effective way to negate their approaches. And, in general, if you happen to parry a projectile close enough to your opponent, you can really get a solid punish. The fourth situation is against landing aerials. In neutral, you may try to wait out your opponent's shield while airborne, then throw out a safe aerial right before landing. It's a common bait where if your opponent tries to punish you for floating around in front of them, they end up getting stuffed by the landing aerial. And if you don't do anything, they'll land with the aerial and get away safely. This is when you could reliably anticipate a landing hit and parry. It can even be when opponents are way above you and you're already sitting in shield because you anticipate they're going to fastball and land with an aerial. This will definitely hurt aerials that tend to be safe on landing. By no means is intentional parrying limited to these four scenarios. Parrying will be effective against all hits on shield, but these scenarios will surely become the most consistent parrying application, and I'm very curious to see how the meta will adapt to this. I know it might seem like I'm exaggerating this, but I really, really believe in it. Please share the video to spread the discussion, and don't forget to hit that DK thumbs up and spank that subscribe button. Have a swell 2019, and I'll see you next time.